Hi guys, welcome to this practical tutorial. We're gonna build a breadboard power supply that takes power from 6 to 15 volt DC and output a selectable 5 or 3.3 volt. This board can be easily inserted into a prototyping breadboard using 2.54 millimeter headers mounted at the bottom of the PC board can provide a regulated 5 volt or 3.3 volt for your microcontroller project. In this video, we're gonna build a fully working power supply. We're gonna explain all the design steps. We're gonna start by simulating the circuit diagram in Proteus. Then we're gonna design the PC board with Eagle. We're gonna show you where you can order cheap, good quality PC board for your project. And finally, we're gonna solder the component on the board and do some simple test. Are you ready? Let's get started. So far we have designed many microcontroller based projects, but we haven't covered how to power them. In any electronic product or project, there is always a need for a source of power for the system to work. This source of power can come from different sources like the mains AC line, a battery or even from renewable source like a solar panel or a fuel cell just to name a few. This is the circuit diagram of our power supply. The board has two switches, the on and off switch and the voltage selector switch to select 5 volt or 3.3 volt. The circuit is based around the LM317 voltage regulator. This is an adjustable 3 terminal positive voltage regulator capable of supplying more than 1.5 amp over an output voltage range of 1.25 to 37 volt. This regulator is extremely easy to use and requires only two external resistors to set the output voltage, the R1 and R2. These are some of the features of the LM317 voltage regulator. It has an output adjustable voltage range from 1.25 to 37 volt. It can supply an output current greater than 1.5 amp. It has an internal short circuit current limiting feature, thermal overload protection, and output safe area compensation. The output of the LM317 variable regulator is determined by this simple formula. V output equals to Vref times 1 plus R2 divided by R1 plus I adjustable times R2. If the selection switch is on 5 volt position, R2 in this formula can be the sum of R2 and R3. But if selection switch is on position 3.3 volt, R3 will be ignored because the current will flow to ground directly via the switch. In this formula, Vref equals to 1.25. I adjustable equals to 50 microamp. This is too small and can be omitted. Thus the formula is gonna become V out equals to 1.25 times 1 plus R2 over R1. In our case V out is gonna be equals to 390 plus 330 divided by 240 plus 1 times 1.25 is gonna give us 5 volt and when the switch is on position 3.3 volt R3 is gonna be ignored so we're gonna have 390 divided by 240 plus 1 times 1.25 is gonna give us 3.281 which is close to 3.3 volt. For more information you can go through the data sheet to learn more how to use this LM317 voltage regulator. Let us measure the output voltage. Under the virtual instrument we're gonna use a DC voltmeter. We're gonna connect it to the output of our circuit. Run the simulation, gonna switch on the power supply, you can see the output is 3.3 volt, 
because the selection switch is on 3.3 volt position. I'm gonna set it to the 5 volt position. I can see the output voltage is 5.04 volt, which is more or less equals to 5 volt. Even though the LM317 can supply more than 1.5 amp, we're gonna limit it to below 500 milliamp using this fuse, so that we don't have to use a heat sink on this component. And that's all guys. It's very easy to use the LM317. It requires only few external components. The next step, we're gonna design the PC board of this power supply. This is the power supply schematic in Eagle. We have covered in details in other tutorials how to create schematic and lay out the board in Eagle. So we're not gonna repeat it here. We can refer to our previous tutorials in the schematic and PC board design playlist. Make sure to use the correct component footprint. This is a DC power jack. The switch, we use a small 11.6 by 4 millimeter toggle switch for switch 1 and switch 2. Let us switch to the board view so we can see the corresponding component in board layout view. This is a two-way screw terminal. The fuse we use a 500 milliamp PPTC resettable switch. These are the 0.1 inch header pins that we're gonna solder at the back of the PC board. J4 will be connected to VCC and J5 will be connected to ground to provide power to the breadboard power lines. J2 and J3 are not electrically connected to the board. They are just used for mounting purposes. Make sure that the spacings of these header pins is correct so that the pins can fit properly inside the breadboard. The LED, we use a 5mm bright red LED. And the rest are resistors. We've got two electrolyte capacitors and a ceramic capacitor. We routed all the traces on the top layer here in red color. And we created a ground plane on the bottom layer by adding a copper pole using the polygon tool. This is how our boat is gonna look like. This is the top side. And the bottom side. The next step now is to generate the GEBA files. These are the files that you can send to your manufacturing house to build your board. Even though you can generate GEBA files in Eagle by clicking on the CAM processor. To make things simpler, we're gonna use PCBWay online GEBA converter to generate GEBA files from our Eagle board file. This is our favorite PC board manufacturing company. They produce quality PC board at a very competitive price. With $5, you can get 10 PC board of one to two layers. In any electronic design, the PC board is one of the most crucial part with its quality affecting the overall quality of these devices. For rapid prototyping or for commercial product, you can't take chances with any PC board company. It's always a must to use a specialized, reputable PC board manufacturing company. We recommend PCB Way. You can try them for yourself. You'll get free PC board for your first order. These are the boards we ordered from them. The quality is really good. The green solder mask is really shining. All the traces pads, the markings on the silk screen are just great for this low price. To generate GEBA files, from this link, browse for files, select your Eagle board file, open, run the conversion. There is also a GEBA viewer. This will give you one last chance to analyze your PC board to make sure that everything is correct before you send it to your manufacturing house. Click on download GEBA to download your GEBA files. Click OK. You can send this zip file to your manufacturing house to build your board. The next step, we're gonna solder the component on our board. <music>
here is our breadboard power supply it's very compact the PC board size is just 35 by 40 millimeter we're gonna measure the output voltage first we're gonna connect 12 volt in switch on the board then measure the DC voltage in the breadboard power rails it's 5 volt let's switch to 3.3 volt position it's 3.49 now you can make your own power supply for your microcontroller based prototypes with no problem thank you guys for watching if you have any comment or question you're welcome and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.